Hey guys, this is Gary, and uh, I just wanted to make a quick video to show you how I got a shot uh, whereby the background is completely white. Uh, there's many ways to do this. I'm not saying this is the only way. Um, there's a ton of ways to do it, actually. But, you know, this is a way that I did it. I was kind of pressed for time. So I used two uh, studio strobes, two mono blocks by... Uh, you know, Paul C. Buff, uh, Einstein uh, 640s, they're pretty powerful. So I've got a square softbox, and that's my backlight. It's also basically my background. So when the flash fires, it's going to be completely white. Uh, the, the subject is this camera here. And um, uh, so I backlit it with a, you know, square softbox with diffusion material. And I have a beauty dish in the front to provide fill light. Now, the fill light uh, is going to illuminate the front of the camera, obviously, and because the camera is mostly black, uh, it turns out, not that I knew this ahead of time, but it turns out that both of these uh, lights are set to 160 watt seconds. In other words, they're both outputting the same exact amount of light. Now, um, this, this uh, beauty dish light is a little farther, not much, maybe six inches farther away than the backlight. Um, but, you know, I didn't, I was kind of surprised. Anyway, let me just show you. All right, so as far as my camera, this is, this is, this is Cinnamon. She's my girl. Okay, so as far as my camera, I've got an exposure setting of one two hundredth of a second, which is basically the maximum sync speed for this camera. Um, I've got f16 because I wanted to make sure that I had a large enough depth of field so the camera would be inside of that depth of field front to back. Uh, and I'm also using a telephoto lens at 200 millimeters. So that was going to basically, because of the phenomenon known as compression, was going to actually shorten my depth of field somewhat. That's why I'm at f16. The point of this is, oh, and my ISO is set to 50 for the least amount of noise. So the point of this is, my ambient exposure without the flashes would produce a black frame. So this scene is entirely lit with flash, all right? That's pretty much the nuts and bolts of it. So it was just trial and error. All right, here we go. So I'm going to have to go outside the frame because, again, I'm shooting it with a long focal length. And here's the shot, right? There we go. Pretty cool, right? The camera is basically in a sea of white, yet the detail in the camera is, is all there. You know, the camera isn't overexposed, even though it's completely surrounded by white. So I'm going to take two more shots so you can see what I'm talking about. I'll turn off the front light, the fill light, so you can see what the back light is doing. <clears throat> right, so now you got a silhouette. Now I'll turn on the fill light. And I'll turn off the backlight, and this will give you an idea uh, as to how the fill light is influencing the shot. All right, so, you know, that's a pretty boring shot, pretty bland shot. Um, really, it's the backlight that provides the drama here. So I'll take one more shot with both of them on so you can see. Um, so, the, so essentially, it comes down to this. The backlight is backlighting the camera, but it's also the background. So you can't see the edge of this white foam core board, which is what this is, by the way, in case you're wondering. It's just like, you know, two or three dollar piece of white foam core board I got at Staples. These things come in really handy. I have a couple black ones and white ones for different situations. And uh, there's so much light coming off this, this rear light, plus the light that's bouncing off of this white foam core board that that edge of the board is completely buried. It's just, just, it's just not even visible. So, okay, one more shot. And, you know, I'll go back up a little bit more so you can see more of the actual scene. There you go, right? So, uh, yeah, I mean, I was very happy with these results and, you know, it's, it's, can't always say that. I very seldom say that, but in this case, uh, yeah, I was I was very pleased with the results, and um, just so you know, I mean, I've, I've I do some retouching work for a 
a photographer who has a contract for a huge uh, retailer. He does all their website work. And uh, he usually has two big, uh, you know, studio strobes aimed at this white background, okay? And that lights the background. And, and then maybe eight feet in front of that, he has his product table, and then he'll shoot the product with a completely different set of lights. So he has basically two zones. One zone for the product and another zone to make that background go white. Even with that, we have to go into Photoshop and make the background paper white because the client wants the, um, the product to be, you know, look, look like it's just sitting inside this white piece of paper. You know, in other words, the background is paper white. There's no border at the edge of the frame. Once it's put on a white piece of paper, you know what I'm talking about. And in this case, the web, a white web page. So uh, yeah, there's, there's a ton of ways to get a white background. This worked really well for me and you know, hopefully it will for you too. Hey guys, so in the first part of this video, I mentioned that we would take um, a product shot into Photoshop to make the background pure white. Well, I wanna show you how you can do that in Lightroom. It's actually pretty easy. So here's the shot. If, you, if I hover over uh, the right-hand corner, the upper right-hand corner, if you look over here under the histogram, you see the red, green, and blue channels are all at 100%. If I come down to the lower right, it's not exactly 100%. If I come into the middle, now it's not even close to 100%. Lower right, no. Upper, I'm sorry, lower left, no. Upper left, yeah, that's okay. So we need to do a couple things here. So basically, I'm going to hold down my Alt key, take my whites slider, and you see that black area? When I pull this slider to the right, anywhere that goes white is going to be 100% white. Okay? So now lower right corner, good. Lower left corner, good. It's just the middle here. So I'm going to take um, an adjustment brush, and I'm going to set his exposure to be one stop over and I'm going to make it rather large and I'm just going to sort of paint along the bottom and feather it in just very subtly like so just want to get that bottom edge white okay I'm going to hit done now if I hover over we can see that indeed the bottom border of the frame is white so this image could be put into a white layout and you wouldn't see any uh, you wouldn't see the edges of the frame. Now, there's some other things that need to be done to this camera. I mean, I I was very bad. I was lazy. I didn't clean the camera at all when I shot it, so it's very dusty and dirty. So I'm just going to show you. Um, here is the uh, the uh, spot removal tool in um, Lightroom. I'm going to make sure it's set to heal. Take my left bracket key and make it smaller. And just like, I'm in Lightroom 5, but just like in Lightroom 4, if I click, then Lightroom, this brush behaves just like it did in 4. I can take all the spots out very easily and quickly, like so. Just keep going here. I'm not going to do the whole camera because it will take all day. But I wanted to show you, new in Lightroom 5 is the ability to paint in spot removalness, as it were. So... Okay, and there's a little piece of dog hair here. Let me move this down here like this. Okay, and then I'm going to paint over this piece of dog hair like so. All right, I missed some stuff up here. Okay, so you see how that works? Very cool. That's new in uh, Lightroom 5. So uh, one last thing. I'm not, again, I'm not going to do the whole camera because it'll take too long. One last thing, I'm just going to take and paint over here. This is an imperfection in the foam core board. Look at that. It's gone. So this new functionality that Adobe added to the spot removal brush is pretty cool. Um, well, all right, one last thing. I'm going to grab an adjustment brush, and I'm going to lower the exposure by about a stop. Now, this is a rubber lens hood, and it's pretty dirty. So I'm just going to darken it by painting over it kind of hide the dirt a little bit that looks a little better I'm gonna go new and this time I'm gonna bump up my exposure by half a stop and just paint over here 
because I was losing detail here and in here on the lens barrel, like so. So the cool thing about Lightroom is you can actually tweak different areas of the photograph. All right, I can get carried away, but I won't. So that's, you know, that's pretty cool. We're done. And um, making a background white, there you go. See you next time.